Our progress towards understanding the natural world has proceeded at a fast pace. To even contribute to current scientific knowledge and discover something new about the world takes decades of education in increasingly specialized fields with questionable relevance to daily life. So this begs the question, have we solved all of the major mysteries in biology? Are there any important questions left to explore? The most important questions in biology are often the most difficult to answer. Today, I will be bringing you the top five unsolved mysteries of biology. Let's get started. Number five, neuroplasticity. The two most numerous cell types in the brain are neural cells and glial cells. There are thought to be 100 billion neural cells and 100 billion glial cells, and even more connections between these two types of cells, connections that are needed for cell-to-cell -cell signaling. Together, these cells and their connections allow us to feel things like hunger and pain. They allow us to move in the world and interact with it. They allow us to learn new things and form memories, and these are just to name a few. Neuroplasticity can be defined as changes in the structure of the brain or changes in the cell-to-cell -cell communication between different cells in the brain. Now, these changes can occur in response to our normal life cycle, they can occur in response to different diseases, or just in response to normal environmental stimuli like learning a new skill. Anytime you learn a new skill, form a new memory, or decide to subscribe to a new YouTube channel like this one, your brain is changing under the principle of neuroplasticity. To truly understand neuroplasticity, that is to say to understand how the brain is rewired, we must first understand how the brain is wired to begin with. Now, massive billion dollar projects by the US and the European Union are developing new tools for imaging the brain, for controlling brain activity, and for developing computational models of brain architecture. Number four, aging. Jean Calment is the oldest person to have lived living 122 years. But is this the maximum human lifespan? So while life expectancy has risen considerably in the last century, the maximum human lifespan has stayed pretty constant at around 120 to 125 years old, based on maximum reported ages at death. Aging can be loosely defined as the accumulation of mutations in our cells that increase the risk of disease. One mechanism for this accumulation of mutations is a slight degradation in the genetic material that is copied with each cell division. This is just how image quality degrades if you make a copy of a copy of it on a printer. With the accumulation of these mutations, you have an increased likelihood of developing a life-threatening disease. But things are not so simple. Our bodies have processes to correct mutations. They have corrective machinery. So a more accurate statement for aging uh, can be defined as when the human body can no longer keep up with the accumulation of mutations and they start to build up. But is aging inevitable? One of the most controversial scientific ideas is that there is no limit to the maximum human lifespan. This hypothesis came from a study that observed a plateau in the risk of death above age 105. If we can slow down the accumulation of mutations, thereby slowing down the aging process, then it may be possible to achieve a human lifespan greater than 125 years. Number three, stem cell medicine. Not every cell in the body can freely divide and replicate. Skin cells are constantly dividing and replicating and renewing the tissue, but heart and nerve cells are not. They cannot divide and replicate after becoming fully developed. This is why a cut to the skin is really no big deal, but a small cut to the spinal cord is devastating. If there is a way to make nerve and heart cells begin to divide and replicate after becoming fully developed to heal damaged tissue, this would be amazing. Now, even these non-dividing heart 
and nerve cells must have come from undifferentiated cells that divided to form heart and nerve cells. Now these undifferentiated cells are called stem cells and progress into research on these stem cells is called stem cell medicine. One of the main strategies to heal damage to non-replicating tissues like heart and lung tissue is to program undifferentiated stem cells to differentiate into the damaged non-replicating tissues and to inject those cells into the affected areas. Now programming undifferentiated cells is the hard part. Figuring out which genes to turn on and off to induce the stem cells into specific cell types is an ongoing area of research. Number two, consciousness. It's probably abundantly clear by now that there are a lot of brain-related mysteries in biology. The most fundamental of which is consciousness. There is still a lot of debate on the definition of consciousness, but a general definition can be that consciousness is everything we experience, including our awareness of the outside world. What was once debated purely in philosophical terms is now being investigated using scientific principles supported by brain imaging techniques. Philosopher Rene Descartes famously stated, I think, therefore I am, using his ability to think as evidence for the existence of the conscious self. But what about the neural networks in the brain give rise to consciousness? Can consciousness be scientifically defined? Most scientists would agree that a small network of neurons in a petri dish responding to electrical stimulation does not have consciousness, while a fully functioning brain does. So what is the minimal neural network required to constitute consciousness? And what portion of our brain has that ability? The search for the minimal neural network of consciousness has led scientists to study Neural Correlates of Consciousness, or NCC. Put simply, they are trying to find which areas of the brain are active during conscious awareness. By imaging the brain and measuring neuronal activity in different parts of the brain during sensory experiences that correlate with consciousness, scientists have pinpointed the area in the back upper section of the brain in the middle of the two lobes that seems to correlate with conscious experience. While this is really exciting, there is still a lot more work to be done to even begin to understand the minimal neural network of consciousness. With the rise of artificial intelligence and machine learning, figuring out exactly what constitutes consciousness is really, really important before we accidentally create a machine with conscious awareness. Number one, the origin of life. This is by far the most intriguing and most important unsolved mystery in biology. We have no evidence of alien life. So why is there life on Earth and how did it come to be? Much of this mystery was solved through the work of Charles Darwin and Alfred Wallace through their discovery of evolution by natural selection in 1858. Evolution by natural selection can explain how a single bacterial cell can evolve into a modern human being over the course of billions of years, but it cannot explain what gives rise to that single bacterial cell from simple organic molecules. It is thought that the earliest life forms on Earth were powered by RNA macromolecules. RNA can both encode information and catalyze chemical reactions which are the jobs of DNA and proteins in our modern cells today. Additionally, our most ancient proteins in our cells today have RNA cores, and these proteins catalyze chemical reactions using the RNA in their cores. But it's very hard to imagine a world before RNA. Hydrothermal vents, lightning, and random chance have all been proposed as possible explanations for getting life to the RNA stage. With so many theories and no clear winner, the origin of life makes it to number one on the list of unsolved mysteries in biology. 
and we can exactly travel back in time 3.8 billion years and see how life started on Earth. Scientists must make do with recreating the conditions in lab that were on Earth 3.8 billion years ago and testing different hypotheses for how things could increase in complexity from very simple parts. Even if scientists succeed in creating complexity from simple parts in a test tube, it might not be the same way that life started on Earth. The mystery of the origin of life on Earth may not just be an unsolved mystery of biology, but an unsolvable one. I've been Chad of Natural Philosopher. Thanks for watching.